Okay, so first of all, can you set the record straight? Is the American mall thriving or is it dying? It depends, <laughs> which is not the answer you want. So it's basically, uh, um, it's a tale of two kinds of malls. So you have thriving malls, the better ones that are called A malls. They're just killing it. They're the ones who have been able to re renew themselves with restaurants, movie theaters, better retailers. What's different about an A mall? Well, it, it has better restaurants, and uh, rather than the old-fashioned food court, which was a dump with plastic utensils, you know, you have silverware, you'll have also a broader mix of retailers and not just middle to lower end or not just luxury. You'll have a bit of both. At the other end, you do have a lot of weak malls, and the ones that people hear about, the ones that are dying, they're the ones that are generating very little money that are in areas that are not thriving anymore economically and that people have left. So the bottom line is that let's say you have a market that could host five malls, 10 years ago, can now host only three. Hmm. Okay, so you have an A mall, a mall is doing well. Is that just, is that higher end stores or is it really just a mix and geographic location? It's not just um, luxury stores. I mean, they, they, that does help, but you know, for example, the mall that I discuss at length in the, in the uh, feature is Roosevelt Field, which is in Long Island. That has JCPenney and it has Neiman Marcus. Mm -hmm. So you really run the gamut there. But that's sort of the key right now is to offer a little bit of something for everybody. And that's why they're bringing in entertainment, they're bringing in gyms, and eventually, not Roosevelt Field, but others are bringing in things like the CVS drugstore, the, the medical clinic. So in the future, the malls will be a lot more um, uh, diverse in terms of their tenants. Right. Okay, so you write about Simon Property, which strikes me as the biggest company and the most important company that no one has heard of. Um, you write about this in your excellent feature in the new issue. Can you tell us a little bit about it and how large its reach is? So Simon owns 108 malls, like Roosevelt Field, like a King of Prussia in, uh, outside Philadelphia. So they, they tend to own the best malls in the country. But they also own the outlet centers, including my personal mecca, Woodbury Common, which is an hour north of New York, the luxury outlet stores. Um, and they were smart about things. Uh, just two years ago, they spun off their weaker malls. And so their sales per square foot per, uh, per year are way up, they've shot up. And so that's how they're keeping their supremacy. So they shed the weak malls and they invest in the good ones and then they buy uh, better ones from uh, that are on the market. Okay, and so you write in the story that being the largest mall operator in the United States might be analogous to uh, reigning as the queen of the compact disc. Uh, how is Simon avoiding that fate? Well, I will defend compact discs. I still <laughs> buy them, however, I'm in the minority. But in terms of Simon, this is really about them focusing on the malls that are winners and putting the money that it that costs uh, uh, that that it takes to keep uh, the mall the mall in touch with what people are how they're shopping in 2016. The malls that we keep hearing about that are dying are the ones that still look like it's 1956, mm -hmm. which is by the year uh, by the way the year that Roosevelt Field was open. <laughs> All right. So what do you think? In your professional opinion, can Simon Property pull it off? And they are pulling it off. And how? I would be worried about uh, the others. So basically, the, the good mall op operators, and there are four of them, are pulling away from the weak ones. And so it's, uh, it's really a, a income inequality between the mall uh, mm -hmm. operators. So you talk about these B-class malls, these C-class malls are not doing well. Are we going to see a lot more abandoned malls? You know, those photos of Auntie Anne pretzel shops collecting cobwebs? Well, what we're going to see is uh, repurposed malls because those places aren't just going to be ghost towns. They, they do serve a purpose. You know, these are big spaces uh, near populated areas, but a lot of them are, are being, it's already happening, are being repurposed into office space, medical space. Uh, you might even see uh, uh, some retailers opening distribution centers there so they could be closer to cities because, you know, Amazon is getting faster and faster. So those won't be malls, but they're not just going to be places where, uh, where weeds are growing out from the sidewalk. All right. So what do you think about the future of the American market? What is it going to look like? What do you predict? Well, and I'll be there uh, regularly, um, <laughs> but it's, it will continue to have uh, department stores, um, but it'll tend to have a broader mix. But it's going to have things like drug stores. It's going to have things like uh, the dry cleaner. It will have theater. It will have one of a kind restaurants. It will have yoga studios. Uh, you know, uh, it'll have things like Soul Cycle. Um, so it'll be a lot less apparel focus. We see a lot of the apparel retailers have gone bankrupt or closed hundreds of stores, and those spaces are being fixed. So I'm not. Uh, I'm pretty optimistic about the malls as long as they continue to renew themselves. Mm -hmm.